boys. Welcome to the Black Mind Podcast, episode 334? Something like that. Something like that. Um, I'm your host tonight. Um, Jeff will be joining us later, hopefully, maybe, probably. Probably. Um, tonight, I am joined by Josh. Yep. Our ever-beloved um, <laughs> Gamer. fat man of the group. Fat man of the group. Um, <laughs> Yep. And we're joined by and we're joined by our residents, uh, American um, Ben. I, I'm not used to being the American. I'm used to only you talking are to the American, American people. Like, <laughs> who, I keep forgetting who else, who, American. Who else would we have in this chat that's American? I don't know, even know anybody else in this chat that's American. Hmm, uh, <laughs> uh, not much to talk about this week. This week was kind of quiet for some people, but I mean, there's new releases this Josh week. Posted, Josh posted a lot of shit in the, in the chat there. Yeah. Why? How? No, I just saw that. No, we're going to talk about that last one first. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the reason right. I jumped, it, I played that game because uh, on the Wardio server, Jeff is part of and I was invited into. Uh, I was talking to the guys in that server and one of them is doing streaming and he got a partnership with Raid Shadow Legends. And oh my god! So everyone else in that server was like, "Hey, just pl get the download the game and use the uh, the promo code and just like help out his numbers, basically." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever. I'll play the game. I'll, I'll, like you get a tons of fr free shit for doing it." So you're like, "Okay, I'll tr actually try this out and see what this game is like at all." Oh my god! And basically, I'm, I'm just gosh. surprised how much polish there is in the damn thing. But again, it's a mobile game, so it's trying to milk much money as you have. It's better than this uh, garbage ads that you see with the the pull the pins or whatever. Oh God, yeah. those make me so irrationally furious. Yeah, although funny enough, the actual gameplay is just more of like, uh, what's the game? But really early, endless. It's not endless dungeon. It was like this really early flash thing of you hit start and you see your character just slowly grind levels over and over and he has random stats oh. and random oh like the idle games right yeah like it's basically the, i mean this is this basically is an idle game yeah it practically is an idle game uh you can just or funny enough there is a pvp element in this game which i feel it's a little weird and also gets to a point of like if you can't kill anyone then it's like well i can't because you can look at the like stat you cannot you can't don't really look at stats you look at like numbers of like who's a what level and how many stars a certain dude has and you can kind of estimate like okay i can maybe kill this guy because he only has two 20s and maybe 130 and then you have like a 40 and a 40 and it's like i can i can get rid of that but then there's some dudes you can tell if they just threw money at this game they have fucking max level everything and you just go i, I I can't, I can't fucking get through that. Yeah, that's what yeah. The, a lot of those mobile like PvP like turns down to. It's just like, can I beat this guy? If yes, then I accept, and that's yeah. it. Yep. I don't know. The, yeah, it's like, like lame. It, although there's one thing, yeah. one thing I read Shadow Legends that threw me off entirely, and I'm like, why is this fucking here? Global chat. It has. I mean, it has global chat. Like, why does this have global chat? It has chat rooms. Question. It has nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine chat rooms. I, I, okay, I have a question for you there, Josh. <laughs> how many how many racial epithets did you see in the chat there? Oh God! I, like, funny enough, like the one I or I, I mean, <laughs> going up and down that stupid chat list uh, one night, uh, figured out like. Either people are in a chat room or they're not. You can't tell. And also, uh, the people who chat are like nice for the most part. And <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And it's, then again, it is. Then it is. A, it is a mobile game, so you, I, I don't expect anything like too crazy in there. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I, I really think that a lot of people just maybe hit that button by mistake and go, oh, you could probably talk to other people in this, whatever. But it's like. A game like this that has global chats, like wh what are why you need global chat? I don't know. <laughs> it makes seems, it feel like it seems no like a weird sense. staple in like the build in the base building ones, the ones where like you get like a city or whatever. Those ones seem to have like the global chat or whatever, and it's usually just spam with like guild recruitment and like I don't know. This that, is just that's a weird. lot of games though. Yeah, yeah. there's a, there is also like make your own guild shit, uh, which it's part of. 
Although I haven't touched that at all. There are actually still other layers of this part of the game that I haven't touched simply because I didn't have enough resources or I didn't have enough of a certain team to go into it. Because it turns out there's like uh, clan wars and there's certain dungeons for items and there's all the whole bunch of shit. And if you can level up your items, you can level up the characters, you can reincarnate characters and so give them more stars so you can level up more and just again lather rinse repeat leveling over and over you've uh, literally <laughs> described every phone game in yeah. existence yeah. <laughs> i was gonna say reach shadow legends was the start and that's pretty much like yeah like everything is to grind everything you know, like, at first it was kind of neat because you're constantly getting a bunch of shit all the time but now i hit like level I think my account is at level 20, 21, and my characters are, are starting to hit their max levels already. And I'm going, OK, so I need to reincarnate my character by melting three other star lower stars to make him a bigger star character. Basically, like if a character is three stars, sacrifice, I, sacrifice them to make them str uh, to make others stronger. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, exactly. So but the thing is, in this game, you get a lot of uh low tier common dudes over and over again so you can use them for leveling up or you can use them to uh get more stars on a certain character so you can blow up that character even further and fucking it, it feels like this level chart is like if you want to make this dude real good fucking you need a fuck ton of common dudes just so you can get all, <laughs> all feed that all up to the uh, the guy high up on the chart it's like the fucking trickle down effect. It's just terrible, <laughs> but it's it's the the rich literally eating poor. That's pr practically what it is. I mean, that game you as you've already explained. You can tell people who played uh, um, <laughs> how uh, they've already gotten their uh, major wins and stuff like that. Oh yeah, um, but um, yeah, but it, like again, it it's paid to win as you said. So you know, you know. It's still the, the rich eat the, eat the poor, literally. Yeah, uh, I, I know I've hit I'm starting to hit some walls one or two times of I need more silver so I can build on these items further. But I, I feel like, how do you get more silver silver? Well, you have to go in the dungeons and then it kind of, it's, it's this weird kind of like going down the list of, well, you have to go in dungeons. OK, cool. But I need energy. How do you get energy? Well, if you let your game just sit there for 24 hours or you give us money and it's like, ugh. <laughs> like, although funny enough, if you go through the promo code method, they give you so much fucking energy and the energy stacks. I still have a stack of 500 energy. Like I have Jesus. not went below 400. I don't see. I actually think that that's a sign of like a half decent mobile game because yeah. there's a lot of them that don't that refill but don't stack on top of it. Like the only other one that I play is Ark Knights. Or ah. well, the, the only one I play is I play Ark Knights. And Ark Knights, whatever you level up, if you have leftover uh, energy, it just stacks it on top of it, whatever your new level up max is. So like – and even, even if you use – like the the consumables where you consume for energy is they're limited. They only last so long. But if you use them, uh, even when you have max energy, it just stacks it on top of your energy. So it's so like while you're not regenerating energy, so you're not using it like efficiently, you're still like not wasting any of it. Yeah, yeah. Which so, I think is like again a sign of a good mobile game. Which is the only reason why I kind of play this one. It's well, also I, like if you go not to, as douchey about like I've, I've I've also heard that Ark Knights isn't really super play to uh, pay to win. It's just it's it's kind of it's paid dull. to make the levels easier. So like if you have good units, levels become easier. But the game is designed that you can beat the game on the free units or not not even the free units, just three and four star units that are the most common. Like there's people out there that make guides on how to beat all the levels. Like even the event levels that like you would think that you would want like really good characters for can be beaten with just three and four star units, which is like pretty awesome. Yeah. So. No, I just oh man, like I haven't played any mobile games in forever. Like I don't even play Pokemon Go. Like, I tried. I think a game called Sidornik. Uh, Sidornik. Hmm. And yeah, it's a little—it's a little game that you have to match like certain like color items. Like it's got a bottom bar where you match, um, 
spheres of a certain color to another, so you need to get three or four in a row and stuff like that. So you need to like match your movements and make sure you can get it correctly. But um, I didn't really get into it. Um, Arc Knights, I've heard a lot of good things about. I like tower defenses, um, so it's so it's just my tower defense <laughs> itch. Yeah, no, no, I, that's the thing is like it's a tower defense. It's not like super competitive. It's just like yeah, just tower defense. I did play um um boom beach for a very long time oh i love that game that game got my itch for fucking like or composition and strategy really well what? but man did it kind of like man when i fell off i just stopped i like it was just like and i fell off and then i never went back <laughs> i was just gonna say uh, what uh what's the type of game called when you're just you know shooting a dude with a slingshot at a certain angle with certain power is it just a like, and you're trying to go as far distance as you can? I don't. Oh, oh like Angry Birds? Yeah. And, well, well, I'm sure there's a type of name for that because you're trying to launch a projectile as far as you can at a certain angle. And there's shit in your way that, that would either progress you further down this like long distance or maybe progress you backward or something or stop you. Like I, I'm oh, I know, I know, I know, I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to remember myself. Yeah, I, like, I kind of know what you're talking about. Oh, like kind of like the penguin game, right? The penguins that want to fly. Yeah, that or uh, kind of Angry Birds, but more of like you're f f launching a distance. I'm sure there's a name for this. Maybe slingshot game or something. I don't know. Probably. It sounds weird. Sounds like there's flash games back in the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had one on my phone from a artist from Newgrounds made and he i'm not sure if he still updates it he probably does uh but like it's does have some certain like oh pay for energy or whatever but really it does come down to like oh if you have the time and day you have the you know the time and the patience you don't have to pay for a freaking cent and i almost have every single unlock in that damn thing for not paying a single fucking cent in that damn game uh and yeah, it was like basically it's just a game of launch your shit down the like down this long corridor and you upgrade your guns and you upgrade or you you launch your thing through a gun, which is kind of hilarious. And your thing that you're launching could be anything from like a Dragon Ball Z goof character or freaking uh, I think one of the characters was a turtle. Oh, was, I think the game is called launch to turtle or shoot or turtle launch or something like that. And yeah, remember the flash game for that? Yeah. And, and it just it like bounces off its shell and like does the weird poses or whatnot. Yeah. And probably you can... Goatsum or whatever made that, if I remember correctly. He does a bunch of YouTube videos too. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. That actually that's probably what like the art the artwork I'm thinking of is probably him. And <laughs> it's uh... usually bloody <laughs> and pretty exaggerated. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yep, that's yeah. exactly who it is. I yep. probably said his name wrong. Is it like G O Z E? Yeah, mm -hmm. G yeah, G O Z something something. It's I know it's, it's, it's like two Goza. Z's and E M or something like that. Yeah, like Gozem Goza gets whatever. But yeah, but, like he uh, he makes some funny videos and stuff. I didn't know he had his own like mobile game. I thought he just made the Flash games because that's how I found him was through the Flash games, and then he started making little like flash actual animations and they had a youtube channel and i started watching that shit i remember i remember playing that turtle game when i was like you know 14 young yeah young yeah yeah i'm 30 i'm 33 now that was a long yeah, time I turned ago 30, I, tur I turned i turned 30 tomorrow so i know i know what that's like it, it fucking sucks dude i was so depressed my birthday yeah. this year it was not fun and <laughs> yeah and uh what else oh for back down the shadow legends uh fucking i'm just surprised of like how much i yeah, get how, how much the game just looks good like i would just full on suspecting like jank bullshit all over the place but really it was just so much polish on everything and i'm like oh everything works nothing feels like it's falling apart other than like oh you, you know they really like your money they, hey look at all these different packages we have do you want you want to buy you want do you want to buy this one dollar package we have? It only you only get one of it, and all that junk. Oh, and you should always be hesitant when when they say it's a limited time offer stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, another funny. God, I I hate games that do that. I really do. <laughs> They're yeah. playing on FOMO. Like they literally have gotten the human brain 
down to a fucking science and how to manipulate you. Like when you were talking earlier about how like they shower you with shit in the beginning, that's yep. literally to register your dopamine hits with getting stuff. And so that you, you feel good playing the game because you're getting a bunch of shit. And then when they yep. slowly win you off of it, you're like, man, I want that dopamine hit of getting st- a bunch of stuff again. It's like, well, now I have to pay for it all. And that's yep. literally why they do that. It's so fucking dumb. Yep. Uh, it's 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 a scummy business practice that I think they should be getting slapped for. It sh- should be. Well, the problem is, is I, don't even think, I don't even know if it's a business. It's not even really a business practice. It's more of just manipulating the human mind. It's no, it's no worse than how gambling works. Gambling does the same thing. It's like you gamble, you get something, you hit that dopamine hit, and then you gamble again, and then you lose. And then you're like, fuck, I want that dopamine hit again. And then you fucking keep doing it. And I know. It's just the same thing. Like, it's just, we have dumb human brains that love the, the dumb fun chemical. We, 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 love, we, love, we love the dumb fun chemical. It, legit, that's the reason why. Yeah. Um, Frickin- it's why video games even exist in the first place. Because, I mean, it's, it, every, I, almost everything we do is, like, literally for dopamine nowadays. I mean, y- yeah. you would argue. When- well, it's always been, we've always been for dopamine. Even yeah. back when we uh, had to do like a lot of work daily. I know. Yeah. You got a do- you got dopamine hits out of it. It just wasn't as intense as they are now. Yeah, yeah. just humans exist. It's just that because like what we accepted as like acceptable dopamine hits before is now mundane, so we look for something more. Yeah, and that's just it's like it's it, it's like a natural resistance to drugs, except it's our own chemicals in our brain. And that's why people yep. get so sad because they've overstimulated their brain with dopamine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fuck, fuck, this is depressing. I don't like this anymore. I know, because I actually kind of think that in the future there's going to be some law shit about, like, oh, this game is succumbing to the human uh, dopamine hit levels, therefore got to fucking change it or else fucking slap across face. No, uh, what they'll like, do is they'll just is uh, we'll just have implants in our brain that limits our dopamine. So it doesn't matter uh, how much <laughs> how much pleasure we get from anything; it doesn't. It's never gonna secrete. God, I, I, if they ever do that, I would just be. Oh my God, no! Thank time you. to leave the planet. Yeah, time, <laughs> time to eject myself from this fucking world. Get a robot body. See you later. Uh, but I also played another. I played a bunch of games this week. I'm surprised I played a bunch of games. Uh, fucking, I also played uh, Pokemon Arceus because I was seeing a bunch of videos on it and seeing a bunch of people on Twitter tweeting about it. And it was just looking a lot of fun. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll get it brand new because I just think it's genuinely interesting and generally a, a, like a good departure on like just not doing the stereotypical pokemon bullshit over and over uh yeah so basically what pokemon arceus is is literally the what everyone wanted to do in real life if you were doing it like more survival style of pokemon that is you go in the grass you're hiding in the grass you have the ball in hand you see the pokemon that you want to catch and you try to aim the ball and tuck the ball at the stupid thing trying to make sure you don't get noticed or make too much noise and then you cross your fingers hope to god it doesn't bust out of the ball and then it catches you go fuck yeah and you freaking get uh, the ball <laughs> this part is, is still Pokemon in the video game that the ball magically comes back to you and you can freaking check out the stats and stuff like that. Uh, but the thing in Arceus is that the story is an is- uh, what's it called? Isekai? Like you're a person who has wiped memory, don't know who you are, but then you jump. Yeah, it's an is- is- Isekai. Isekai. Yeah. So you don't know who you are. Or actually, you got <laughs> basically it starts from a kid who was basically on his cell phone in his bedroom. And then Arceus was like, hey, I need you to do some shit way back in the past. And the, of course, you being a protagonist that doesn't talk just goes, OK, <laughs> like <laughs> you just do I really get a do I really get a choice in this? No. No. All right, then I guess I'm going back in time. Yep. Uh, and so basically he pulls you out from the ether and chucks you down into uh, was a Shogun, not Shogun. It's uh, Shinto era. I think I think that's the right era uh, of basically like you got thrown back in the past, but it's Pokemon uh, fe- feudal, feudal Japan. Yeah, there we go. Feudal what Japan for sure. Sh- so it would be Shogunate or or, or uh, pre-imperial state. 
um, would be the best way to describe it. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of the words I'm looking for because there was an emperor before the shogunate, and then there's an emperor after the shogunate. And I know that the imperial era is after the shogunate, but I don't remember what's the period before the shogunate. I can't remember. Before they had cell phones. <laughs> yeah. Um. Basically. Um. Is it, uh, isn't it just but, warring um, era? Us? Yeah, but that's sort of. Uh, uh, that's the Sojoko uh, Jedi, but I don't think that would count because there was an emperor period before that. Mm. The Sojoko uh, Jedi period happened because shit happened between the emperor and the shogun, and then mm -hmm. that was 500 years of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just. I, I, but whatever. It's. I, I just can't remember. Yeah, we're not experts in Japanese history. It's not really that big of a deal. And before I'm canceled. Um, but yeah, like uh, the start of the game is basically you got thrown back in the past. Uh, Samurai <laughs> Jack. Yep. Back to the past. No, he got thrown to the Same. future. Oh, bye, Jack. Jack, 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 Jack. That's if I play that game, if I ever get a switch and play that game, that's going to be the name of my character. I'm actually, Jack. I yeah. have it sitting like behind me, like ready to go. I haven't booted it up yet, but yeah. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. You're late. Like, you, you said 20 minutes. You're 40 fucking minutes late. What the fuck? Yeah, I got to leave already? in 20 minutes. It's been 20. Yeah. I said no, start the show without me. Yes, he said start, start the show, yeah, but he said I'll be late. Uh, I'll be 20 minutes late. Just start without me. It's because I left home. Because yeah. I had to. I'm, I'm fucking shitting on him for, being, for lying to me. It's shit on Josh. She's the one who was late yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Josh didn't even respond to anyone. No. Nope. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, are you recording already? Yes, I've already recorded. All I'm right. sorry for being late. Sink in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Black Mind Games we're, podcast. No, 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 off. You've we did that. You don't get to do that. You don't get to do <laughs> that. You don't get oh. to do that. You're late. Uh. I already did the intro. Welcome, oh, Jeff, to the, the party. <laughs> oh, um, leave it in. I get leave asked. it in. Bloopers. You get to leave it in, but um, but uh, you don't get you don't you don't get to do that here today. I don't get to ask the question. No, um, you don't because What's you're late. the question at least asked. Oh, what oh, your stupid fucking Freddie Mercury bullshit. Like I no, what the I fuck. I immediately forgot about it because it was kind of stupid. <laughs> Oh, the question was very simple. The question was, if you had the opportunity to go back in time to save Freddie Mercury, would you, and how would you do it? Um, well, I... No. And no. secondly, that's not a simple question, because that's a lot of variables you're asking for. I know my space-time paradoxes. You're not... That's not a simple question, dude. I mean, it is a very simple question of yes or no, and then how would you do it? Consequences be damned. Alan's oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, so, so what did we talk Pokemon about? Pokemon Arceus. What? But you ran to talk about Pokemon in Arceus. the middle of because we're just talking about how you start oh. the game. Yep. Oh, um, I, I literally I'm like trying to download that right now. But Metroid Dread's like, you have an Emmy to fight. And I'm like, oh, shit. Um, Fuck. back on topic. Uh, I've seen so many fucking memes about the game, though of just giant Pokemon and of course the response of hmm giant waifus I'm just like you know I'm not even mad because <laughs> yep. like this yep. is, it's a Pokemon game it's gonna happen of course there's gonna be fucking yep. all those jokes made but, the, uh, actually, the best one meme. actually the best video I've seen on Twitter was a person who was like he's hunting this one or he's tracking this one Pokemon and he's like, all right, I got a good position. I'm going to throw his ball. He throws the ball. But the thing is, as soon as the ball leaves his hand it bounce backward and he's like, what the fuck? And he turns around. It's that fucking gigantic uh, red eyed Pokemon that are around in the, <laughs> the areas that you're trying to capture these Pokemon. And those are the special alpha Pokemon and they're huge and they're godlike and they will kill you. Like, they will murder you if you like remotely see you in their vision cone. So, <laughs> so basically, the guy just turns around, and goes "fuck," and you see the Pokemon do a giant swing. Oh fuck! <laughs> the guy was bones. Oh. Uh, I saw one where one of them like literally dashes across in front of his screen and like slaps the Pokeball down. Instead, it just kind of like poses in front of him and it does like the fucking like. Uh, like a like a JoJo theme or something. It was really funny. Yeah. To be continued. This is um, like, uh oh. Yeah. 
um ra- uh roundabout row house oh, uh plays yeah oh, also uh th- another thing about the story you do keep your cell phone in the game but people in that era do not make comments about your cell phone ever other than oh that's Fuck, weird immersion broken terrible game zero out of ten yeah yeah um, exactly they're just go oh that's weird oh that tells you where to go that's cool I, and i'm like what the i fuck? hate the i i hate this idea if you get sent back in time like just fucking like why don't you just make this like the village a village hero who goes out to like explore the world of pokemon and it's not even seen as a rite of passage it's kind of like this like you're kind of not exactly like wanted in the village and as a result you go out to the pokemon world why don't I just own that like god damn it that's such a boring story just to isek- get isekai back in time god damn it yep uh, uh. i mean i mean getting isekai is like probably the coolest thing ever no <laughs> to some people i mean I, yeah for some people me i want talking? the is- i want the isekai where the guy main character dies because he got isekai'd <laughs> Yes. So ReZero, you want to go to that one? Huh? So ReZero, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I, ReZero. I want, I want an isekai where the main character uh, is standing there, dabbing, and then all of a sudden he gets attacked for being a demon or something like that. Mm. Why pulls, you, pulls a what? phone out and start like pulls a phone out and like starts like goes like yeah this is how you purify water and some shit and then he gets attacked for like being like a heretic or something like that. If you if you kind of want to see something close to that, watch. Um... Something, something, middle of fantasy. I can't say the Japanese name, but literally, the guy tries to go into a human settlement, and they freak the fuck out when they see him, and they call him a monster. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think I know what you're talking about. And uh, I don't know, I don't know if you want me to say more, but when he when he it goes back to like all the people that he's kind of like recruited before, they're like, "Why do they hate me?" And like, it's literally because you look like a god from your mana that's pouring out of your body, dude. <laughs> It's like, of course they're scared of you. Yep. No, um... Well, the one, um... I just... I, I wasn't on the Pokemon kit when the, the, they started announcing stuff and Sharon's throwing off the alternate form Pokemon. I was like, oh, cool, different art form of, um... I think they did, what, Growlithe, Zoroark, and a couple other Pokemon. And I was just like, I don't know how I feel about some of these choices. Because... I don't like the Grass Starters again, alternate form. It's so dumb. Which one? Mm-hmm. Uh, Juice City Eye. Uh, Wait, they had the the fi- the the final evolution have alternate forms. What? Yeah, they're a region like um like the uh, oh they're origin whatever origin stuff. Oh my god, that's so dumb. Yeah, I don't like it. I think he's like uh, oh no, that means oh no, Typhlosion. Oh no, no, Typhlosion is fucking baller. Okay, Typhlosion is baller. Hang on, but not Pokemon. the the grass one. The grass one is awful, and I hate it. He's um, grass fighting, of course. Oh, but but we all know fire and fighting is awesome. Yeah. No, ty- Typhlosion is fire ghost. Fire mm. ghost? What? Why? That's such. Oh, uh, I don't. I'm just looking at. I'm looking Hold at this on. thing. It looks nice, but I'm like, why? Like you have it, such an easy typing for him that is just fire ground. People really wanted that, but it's not. I know it's so frustrating because it's like it's such an easy one to do. It's like, well, he's a badger. Where do badgers live? They live in the ground. Why not just make him fire ground and then just make him have physical? Oh my god! Guess what the what water one is? is? Oh no! Please don't. <laughs> you gotta realize, Sam. Can, can uh, you okay, start so posting these? No, 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 no. Before, before we go any, uh, before. We, oh my god! What it's even water is tar this type. bullshit? <laughs> Actually, I'm not upset about that, but that just doesn't look That's very Greninja. good. That's Greninja. Like, That's literally Greninja. Yeah, well, like, why isn't he water fighting? Oh my god. Yeah, he's just, he's just a worse Greninja. Because not intelligent. He's a worse Greninja. Because here's the thing, like, Samurott's big thing was that he was a samurai. So why isn't he just a proper samurai? Just make him water fighting, fire ground, and then Decidueye just stays grass, uh, grass ghost, because that works in that trio. Oh my god! I and I, yeah, I just saw it. He, the fucking. Oh my god! He looks so dumb. Hey, I'm just. And you know what makes this even? I'm just you know what makes this really else. frustrating for me? You know what makes this really frustrating for me? Yeah. Is that these are three, uh, three, uh, three of my star, my favorite star, my favorite stars from each of these regions that they came from. Samurai was my favorite one in um, Ishu. Um, Decidui was the, my favorite on the island because that's where he's from. Yeah. And. Mm-hmm. 
Typhlosion's my favorite in Gen 2. And they've, like, I, I hate how all these look. I agree. Actually, no, Sam, Samurott's fine. Um, I just think that Ty, Typhlosion looks a little dumb. But then, because he looks, he looks high. Once his flames are on, he, he looks does. really good. But it's because when his you need, flames are on. If you can get, get, get a picture of him with his flames on, I, I bet I'll change that. Um, dis, I don't know why you do that for fucking Decidueye. Decidueye needed to stay Flying Ghost. Like, oh, my God, I feel so betrayed. Like fire goes, water dark, grass flying. Uh, um, and you know what? That's not even fun because like. Oh, he looks just like a stoner, dude. He is a stoner. He looks like Joe. See, Rogan okay, that that looks fine. Hair. That looks fine. I'm, but again, why? Oh, why? Ghost. But the the way his like pattern on the side of his head it makes it look like curly cues on the side of his like. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I thinking like I'd not really... high, but like an emo female lead. Like, <laughs> yeah, I really don't. I really actually don't like the look of that. Like, I like Samurai's the look of his helmet. It looks like a proper Japanese style. I hate the look of Decidue. Oh my god, he looks like a fucking nerd who needs to put in a fucking closet. Oh my god, you, you like, I actually have a visceral hate for that one. Like, holy jeez. Uh, if you like, think, wow. Okay, so if if you think, uh, hang on, I'm trying to get this one. Um. If you if you think that's bad, wait till you see uh, the Growlithe. There's a, that's fire no, no, rock I like, type. I like that one actually. I that hate one makes this sense. One. It looks so bad. <laughs> it's a food. Oh my god! It's literally a food dragon. Oh yeah, that looks that looks kind of stupid and dumb. Um, that's not even get... close to Growlithe. Growlithe's Who's... a big giant dog. He's cuddly. Hang on. Uh, his uh, evolve form is a little bit better. I still wouldn't use it. Um, hang on. Let me get the let me get the picture. This is what they're supposed like. I think this is what they're this is what they're based off of. Is this? Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So they're supposed to be like. I mean, look, it makes like, sense. Reference to that. Uh, I haven't seen what um Arcanine looks so like. So wait, hold on. Is is this game like set in China? No. Um, no. Feudal Japan. Oh. Basically, feudal Japan. I don't yeah. know how. I don't know how I feel about. Ghost, but water dark again. That's such a weird. Like you had Greninja. Greninja was the better water dark. I think it's gonna be the better. I water think what part. people are really pissed about with Typhlosion is his typing. I think gives him a really bad weakness, and that pretty much it makes does. him. Oh useless. my god! I didn't even think about that. I completely forgot about that weakness. Holy shit! I don't even know what it is. Um, hang on. Let me look it up. I'm going on Bulbapedia real quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just watching this uh, battle tech thing. Um, I actually really, really, really don't like that look. It's so dumb. Um, his weaknesses yeah. are ground, rock, water, ghost, and dark. Mm. So mm. they added two weaknesses to him. Josh, what's your opinion on all these Pokemon? Uh, I, when I ever see a new one, I just go, ooh, catch. Well, he lost a lot of damage by normal types. Like, he's only damaged by flying, electric, psychic, and dragon by one times. So, like, yeah, like, Dark and Ghost moved up to, like, a two times, but he didn't gain any 4X weaknesses, and he gained a normal and fighting immunity, right? Is there immunity Yeah, before? true. I don't know. It's just, I don't like the look of it. And it's also, it's also, like, such a weird combo, too. Fire, didn't we actually just get another fire, uh, fire ghost type in the game? Uh, I believe, uh... Zorark? You mean Zorark? Yeah, hang on. Who's seen... I'm just looking at the info. Oh no, he's sorry. He's normal ghost. Sorry, which is also fucking. <laughs> Why is Voltorb electric grass? I, I, because you know, people are like, oh, they based off of Pokemon balls, and Pokemon balls were made out of wood back then. And I'm like, that is so dumb. Yeah. Because like oh. back in back in old, you can't remember back in old lore, Voltorbs had only just appeared at that period in time. Like in Pokemon, the original Pokemon Red, Red, Blue. Uh, slash green and yellow Voltobes had only just come uh, come into existence of the world hmm. same with Magnemite and uh, Magneton as well as Grimer so like there are certain Pokemon that shouldn't actually exist and Voltobes one oh my god um, what 
hit, uh, do city eye is a four x weakness to flying. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's mm. <laughs> has no immunities. <laughs> Went from immunity he, to he normal used... fighting to no immunities. They just nerfed the I shit know, out of it's, him. It's it's so frustrating because like base decidui is significantly better than this version i think um the reason and again typhlosion was such an easy such an easy combo setup it's just fire gra ground and like i know that's going to make him a terrible typing because it does make him a terrible typing but it also matches with what he is he's a fucking fire badger the worst part is i don't think the voltorb looks very bad it actually looks very it's cute. learn set is fucking boring as fuck too who? Uh, Decidia. It gets it gets like Aura Sphere, Triple Arrows, Brave Bird, Leaf Storm, like fucking boring shit. Yeah, it's again, it, it's actually one of my bigger problems with the um with a lot of the more recent um, Pokemon games is a lot of the stuff hasn't been very like very well thought out or very well developed because they're trying to get a new game out every I think two years right now. Yeah. I don't think that works. Yeah. Um. And again, like I like I'm I, I like I, as much as I love Pokemon, because I love the look of a lot of like a lot of the new Pokemon. While well, there's some that are really dumb, and there are some really fucking stupid ones, but at the well, same time, there's some really good ones too. Like Decidueye was one of those Pokemon that I was like, that's a really cool one. Same with Primarina. I still think that um, Incineroar is kind of goofy looking, but I'm like, it's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, Rillaboom looks dumb, but I'm um, whatever. Same with Inteleon looks fine, but it's just like it. I hate that all three of those, all three of those starters, those final evolutions are all monotype again, instead of doing something unique with them. Like I wouldn't have cared if it was if um, Cinder Ace was fire fighting. It would have been fun. Like it's got he's got the competitive spirit and stuff like that. So it's like, or even or even or even just a weird one like fire fire electric out of nowhere. Like yo, what? He's like yeah, he's so quick with the ball. He's such a good soccer player that he's that he's fast and he's on fire. He's like yo, that's really cool. Oh, I just looked at fire. I just looked at we. Uh, yeah, okay. QC and Arcanine looks okay. It's not that bad. Could be better. Uh, well, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, normal ghost. But it's just it's it, yeah normal ghost. I thought it was gonna be fairy ghost because like that would have been a cool combo. It would have gone from like a just a pure dark type, but that's still a terrifying because thing. It gains immunity to one of its big neat weaknesses, fighting, and it also gains weak uh, immunity to normal type and ghost. Yo. And it, no, yeah, and ghost. Holy shit! It's, it's actually got three immunities. It's only weak to dark. Oh, but Dark's got a lot of... Oh, there's a lot of Pokemon that learn Dark. That's though. true. There, the Dark's a lot more common than it used to be, but still. I still think it's a pretty good so, Pokemon. With one, yeah. It got a buff to speed as 110 base speed with 125 special attack. Oh, wow. Wait, what? They so, redid... They so, redid... Why did they redo this one? What? Avalog got, re, Avalog got redesigned. He's now Ice Rock, which I think he gives, which I think gives him a four times weakness to fighting. It does. It gives him a four times weakness to steal too. Two of the most common types. Uh... <laughs> so, so, anyways, uh, I was just going to ask a really stupid question. Um, okay, go for it. Should I buy Pokemon Arceus? Because I have a hundred dollar gift card. Um, I've heard good things about it. So the um, only th negative things I would say about it is to, from my couple hours of playing it, I would say that uh, it's still slow, like from just getting to a point of like, OK, I can kind of do shit and do what I want and whatever. Uh, uh, it's still slow. And also other games that kind of do the same thing, what this is doing, like, let's say Breath of the Wild, kind of the same idea. Uh, it Breath of the Wild looks great, even though the game's on a uh, so, switch and it's, you know, probably like run on four potatoes. It still looks good. This So this what I'm game, hearing is that me and Josh need to stream. This. Yeah, but the thing is, Arceus, it looks like they should have had it in the oven for another year, just so that when they mm -hmm. do these pan shots of where you're looking, they look good. When you do these pan yeah, shots, like they don't look good. 
and also that's what i've heard is the biggest problem yeah. is a lot of like the like really good like stop that should be like yo this is a camera picture yeah like even when you're out in the world when you like get to a top of a hill and you look out over a field and you should just see this sweeping valley with nice looking trees i've seen that to be the biggest complaint because there's constant popping there's constant and like popping and also it's an aggressive popping too yeah, and uh aggressive popping and also uh the animations on st- the Pokemon that are just outside of the your field of vision type or the uh, death of field type of thing. Uh, if it's just that on that edge, their animations go from smooth to one frame, two frame, one frame, two frame, one. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> oh, I just saw a really cool like, oh, my God, this would have been really cool. Like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you run with this? God damn it. Because <laughs> fuck you. Uh... Anyways. Again, I think when have again, game companies as as the... made good decisions? Uh, um, ten years uh, ago. Uh, True. Uh, well, uh, three four three when they no. released Halo Infinite. I'm sorry, three four three still hasn't gotten off the hook for the fucking bullshit related to fucking launch bullshittery with the fucking multiplayer. They are still on the hook for that. I mean, I mean, let me put it like this: it, it's a breath of fresh air when a game company releases a game and the game semi functions. That, no, you should not be praising a company for that. Shit that I we mean, used to I get, shouldn't? shit that we used to get on day one, should not be something pro- a company should be praising for. Josh, back me up for this. What? No, what? No. This is how we get Battlefield 2042, Josh. This is how we get that. They literally do yeah. not have a scoreboard. They're not even going to add the scoreboard until March. <laughs> yeah, they so literally delayed the season one. I have a feeling, like, I have a feeling like, COVID. COVID really fucked shit up for a lot of deaths. No, 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 no. no. They did this on purpose. <sighs> no, they like they they've confirmed that they did that on purpose. A lot of the bullshit that happened with the uh, Battlefield 2042, a lot of it was design decisions. Um, it happened with um Call of Duty. It happened with. Uh, like again it was all design decisions and a lot of people were like oh it was covid i'm like if you ever say that again because the thing is is that like they they were given all these additional resource time they a lot of these games got pushed back because of covid so they had more development time than they were initially going to have what does that say halo got in shit for its fucking preview at at e3 what two years ago halo got for shit for uh, it's preview at E3 in 2019, and uh, holy shit! Like, you guys, you guys have a good point about that. The reason why I'm saying, like, the reason why I'm saying, like, this is a, Halo is a breath of fresh air. Is that's a really sad statement? Yeah. Okay. And that's it's a reason, really it's sad statement. Be, it's the reason like, why we're going like, the only no, other you game, be praising this. The only other game I can think of that had an actually half decent launch is M- Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and even then, it had some problems. Um, I don't even know if I can give a Mass Effect... Le- I, I, I know you're probably not allowed to do anything I want to see there. Well, yeah. this, this is probably going to edit out. So. Never right. mind, then. There's no point. No, don't worry about it. Like, um, no, no. But, my, my, but that, again, that, that, that is a constant problem, though, is like... I, I, think, this is di- I think this is the mistake from... Um, this the is Pokemon the problem company with and online. Nintendo, they got to get a Pokemon game out every two years to capitalize on the market now because that's how they built their model around. And I think that's a bad decision. Like, they should be like, no, our next Pokemon game isn't going to come out for four years. We're going to slow down. We're going to be focusing on putting out proper material. Because here's the thing. Um, Why not? X and Y. X and Y had apparently like a third of the game cut. Huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got, I got, I got a solution to what we're, we're talking about. Okay, Metroid Dread came out this year. Okay, and it actually doesn't have a whole lot of problems. Like yes. it's actually been very well yes. received. That's a really good example. That, that's a really good example. That should be like the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, it's actually some, and, and, I think if Game Freak was to push more Pokemon games, why don't they just hire another dev studio and then have them run their spinoff games? Like, give us that's what, what they like, did. Give us more. That's what they did with Diamond. But, it, but it's the poke. It's poke. It's uh, it's actually two companies they got to work with then, because it's Nintendo owns Pokemon Company and Pokemon Company owns the right to Pokemon. So everything has to be run by Nintendo and Pokemon Company. Whereas currently, it's only from Pokemon Company to Nintendo. Yeah, there's a lot. There's actually like a big, big. Big, is, like, bullshittery going on there. That's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, I know, right? Um, I think one of the bigger problems also is that 
um, currently the big problem for a lot of game development, and this is a big problem for Pokemon right now, is because they're stuck in that like rapid game cycle. Because like instead of actually like, focusing on like making, and this is actually a problem for one of my my favorite games, um, Hearts of Iron. Hearts of Iron. The community for the past three years. Um, not even since the game initially launched, for the past three years, have been constantly asking for fixing of optimization and fixing of these. And, like, we keep getting, like, we're like, hey, look at this new feature. Like, we're cool, but we want fucking optimization fixes. And they don't give it to us. And we just keep going. We just, like, we're like, just listen to us. Like, it's great that we're getting all these fixes, but we're also like, hey, why isn't this this um this function getting fixed or why isn't the optimization so that the game doesn't lag in the last like once you hit 42 forward <laughs> it's actually really frustrating because actually and it, but again it's 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 almost like game companies aren't listening or aren't paying attention to what the problems are they're trying to look for like quick and easy solutions to things that don't have quick and easy solutions uh i'm basically. gonna hit myself for this so th th but this is this is why i like whoever is making w the warhammer warhammer 3 and wh whatever studio that is i'm gonna just disassociate oh. that from game workshops i am so glad that at least they're taking their time and they're actually doing the things that the community have been begging for which is the no the revamp to the siege <laughs> system is one of the biggest they things that they did what do you they mean did they didn't it? It's still the you got okay. So the problem with the siege system for Warhammer one and two was you were only able to attack one wall. Okay. You weren't attacking a settlement. You were attacking a section of a wall. And the towers could reach out so far that you would spawn in and immediately get hit by towers. I mean, yeah, I, I, I so played like, the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, apparently, it's still an issue because you're only still attacking like one section of wall instead of attacking a, attacking a settlement. I mean, there's only like, like I, I, so much. There's, I mean, the thing is, like, if you look at like, uh, what was it? The Dynasty Warriors? Not the Dynasty Warriors. The um, fuck, what was it? Romance in the Three Kingdoms. Yes, uh, they have. They had much more settlement style, like sieging. But like, the thing is, is you're only going to focus on the one section anyway, because no. like, if you spread your army like too thin around the walls, nothing's going to get accomplished. No, actually, believe it or not, um, and this is the reason why. Like, I, I'd rather have like a, attacking a proper full settlement, because in a good example, Rome, 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 Total War Two, you had the full dynamic development of the city, and Rome was a really good example because Rome had multiple layers of walls in it, and it's in like on the campaign map. So you you'd attack one section wall, and then you'd get through that wall, and suddenly now you got to deal with the next section of wall, and you got and like it's stages of siege, and it's really well done. I mean, and that was only uh, and that was. I think two years before Total War Warhammer came out, and it was a constant thing. Like, like you had very well set up settlements, you had constant things. But it, the problem is, is that like you don't, you're not fighting for settlements. You're fighting for a section of wall with the rest of the city behind you, and it's just like it, it's actually really frustrating for me. It's because as much as I li like, as much as I like some of the fixes that they've done for the game, um, they fixed um, certain like diploma, uh, diplomacy mechanics. They fixed certain um, unit problems. But the, the sieges haven't really been fixed. It's almost like it's more like a recoding more than anything. Else. I would rather take the rework of the sieges that we're getting. than continue with the same easy as shit sieges that I've already had, because like even in like Shogun Total War 2, like their sieges, like they, they you were sieging a castle like you were literally sieging the castle. Yeah. But like, yeah, I like how it, this conversation went from like Pokemon to Total War. Yeah, well, it's because we're just discussing game design, game development, it, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but like with, with with Shogun Total War too, it it didn't matter at all the fact that like you could surround the castle, like stra like most of the strategies that it came down to to like beating that stuff, there was an optimal way to do it, and it, then it completely was subverting the point yeah. of the map and that was kind oh, of the I, same oh, problem that the other ones have like when you play the three kingdoms one there's a more optimal way than like yeah. surrounding oh, no. the thing and like doing it that way and it's it's like so when yeah. you can only fight a section of the wall and you're gonna do it anyway so like well no and, and this, is, this, this is the thing with um shogun 2 and this is actually where the start of the siege problem started is shogun 2 um and i, I i've actually like gone back and played um Medieval 2, Rome 1, um, Napoleon, and 
Empire, but Empire is a bit of a different beast. I guess maybe it's because I haven't seen the, the the better siege mechanics, but like all the ones that I've seen have just been awful. All the open actual fighting is so much better than actual any of the siege stuff, and the siege stuff is so tedious and just like I already know how to either a defend it out maneuver the AI or outmaneuver. I've played it versus like my friends too, and outmaneuver them in the same situation where it's super easy on both sides, and it's just like this is just like pointless, just waste my time. But like yeah, I've never well, got, that's, that's what I, that's that's what a lot of people hate about the current Total War stuff is because it's tedious and boring. You only get attack one section of wall, and if you're and if you're defending, you don't even go on the wall. You literally don't because it's a waste of time. Yeah. You pull back and you sit in the city of your uh, center of your city because you literally can't like keep them off the walls. You can't target down siege towers or target down units that have ladders because they just can climb up on the wall. They have monster creatures that can just break down the barricades, and it's just can like we... it's much as I'd like. Hey, that's a cool mechanic, but it's actually like such a constant problem for the game that it actually kind of like prevents you from actually doing strategizing. Like, hey, I'm gonna send this cavalry unit out from this gate over here and flank it out wide and around and go out for like a long drive to see if I can pull some units away from the wall while I defend and basically force the AI to like react to the fact of, oh, there's cavalry over there. Let me send my cavalry to counter that while my infantry keeps pushing. Because that was the thing that happened in Medieval 2, Empire, and... Um, um, Rome, you could do that because you had multiple gates, you had multiple exits, and multiple entries. In Warhammer 2 and 1, you only have like one or two gates, and they're side by side, so the enemy can just wheel and just deal with you on the spot, so you don't go outside the walls. It's not even worth going outside the walls unless you're chasing down units. On top of that, it doesn't... It, it's it's a lot of like really weird mechanical stuff that I... I it's just... Uh, I miss... I like... Yeah, maybe maybe it's because I'm uh, maybe it's because I'm used to the better uh, the older beasts, but I don't know. You, you no, it's completely is because of that. Anyways, we should switch gears. Did we talk about Dota? Did we talk about Bungie? Did we talk about Mech Warrior? So what uh, did we'll Dota do? Mech War... uh, okay. Dota released a new TV series. It's called Dota uh, Blood Dragon. Isn't that That's like old. Been out for a while? Yeah, it's been out for a That's while. Old. Yeah. But they released the second season, and I finally watched it. Mm, okay. Is it is it the same? Uh, is it anywhere near the same level as Arcane? Because if it's not, then I don't care. Because it's yes, it is. There's, I don't. Dota lore oh, is so be very careful. Obscure. Be very careful with what you're saying there, Jeff. You be, you, because if you I, say I that, need to and, I, I, I I I'm going to say that I actually like this series a lot. Uh, I wanted Alan to watch the series to confirm my opinions. I haven't been able or, to watch it yet. I've been yeah, too busy with so schoolwork and stuff. I actually really like the animations, but basically the lore is is that you have a dragon knight who basically uh, can turn into dragons, and this, of course, becomes a problem uh, for the community. And it's very politically focused. Um, okay, overall. so that can, that can mean... Okay, I hear politically focused, and I'm like, that's one of four things, and I don't know how I feel about that statement. Um... It's, but, um, it's it's a very complicated series, and, like, um, the animation I find is really good. I liked a lot of the series. It just got it sucked into me, and I actually watched it. Now, that being said, I haven't watched Arcane, so I'm not comparing the two. Yeah. Um, you should do that. I would probably... I No, here's the thing, Jeff. Go watch Arcane. Arcane, mm. like, Arcane blows so much shit out of the water because it's so good. Like, there are problems with Arcane. There's, it's small things, mostly. Yeah. And the few problems that do prop up are, like, either some plot inconsistencies. Like, there's a couple. There's, like, there's one or two. Or and the normal characters there, being stupid. Or certain characters being stupid, yeah. That's just TV it's in not general. All, it, yeah, mm -hmm. it, but sometimes, well, you want to try this and avoid is... that as much as possible. You really want to try, uh, try and avoid that. Cause... Well, this one, like, the reason why, like, okay, so this one was a very completely different series entirely than Arcane. Instead of, like, focusing on Jinx and Vi and their relationship and what caused Jinx to snap, it focuses on the universe as a whole. Yeah. Okay. And... You need to watch Arcane. Yeah, Arcane focuses you don't know what you're... not... You need to watch Arcane because you don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, focus yeah, on yeah, just yeah, two yeah, characters. No. It focuses on so it's, many more characters and the world it's... developing as well. Here, let me, let me I, put I'm it this just way. Gonna, I'm, no, no, I'm just going to... Uh, no, 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 no. Let me Jeff, finish. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. 
All I was going to say is I have it on Netflix right now, and it's go literally queued and it. ready to go Kay. when we're finished the show. You're going to be up all night tonight. <laughs> I promise you that now. Well, um, I can watch one episode, go to bed, and then... <laughs> what <episode? laughs> mm. Good luck You with say that. that. Good luck with that. Um, let me put it this way, Jeff. Jinx and Vi are the main characters, and that is in quotations. Um, because okay. cause it's not actually about jinx and vi it's about zon and piltover and the world of those two cities and how they became major players in that and all that and how they became how they went from a small mercantile science city state to like the trade hub of the world where all the kingdoms are vying for trade networks with piltover and how zon becomes this secondary state to piltover and is more of a more malicious science state it's really well done it's so good and it's not just a work of passion it's a work of art it's it's the french french chef kiss to a pièce de résistance and i'm hoping i'm praying to god that season two doesn't come out next year i want that delayed for a full two years so that it can work out it properly and continue the story good and well they had started develop they said they had started development uh on season two fairly near the end of it and i think they said they're looking at a 2023 release Good. Okay, that's that's the correct move then. Cuz like that's the problem with a lot of like modern shows and stuff like that is they they want to do yearly releases. And as much as I like sometimes you need to do that with like certain shows. Like certain shows like um as much as I hate the show SWAT or um Brooklyn um uh, not Brooklyn 99. Um Chicago Fire, Chicago Med and Chicago uh yeah. Chicago PD. Those are those are like series series. So like they've got, but they've got the budget behind them, so they can keep good writing going, and they're all very serialized. So every episode's its own you know, little thing with some plot threads going through. Whereas a show like Arcane, because it's such a story driven experience with good characters and stuff like that, it needs time to be like written and developed out. It's like Dune. Actually, the best the best comparison I can say is it's like Dune. Yeah. So. So, anyways, back to Dragon Blood. Okay. Uh, which I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to look up the IMDb rating. Um, so, Dragon Blood season two came out. It continues uh, the story of Dragon Ball Blood season one. Um, I liked it. It was very good. Uh, I liked the animation. Um, dr- it's nice to know what a dragon thinks of a human being when he starts calling him Sunbeam. Um, and it has a 7.9 on Metacritic, so, and 7.9 on IMDb. So, yay! Uh, and they also got the original voice actor for uh, Dragon Knight, so, woohoo! So, I liked it. It was very good. That's all I'm going to uh, say on I it. will try and give it a watch over this week. Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna compare it to Arcane because I think Arcane. You need to be very rated. careful of that comparison. I'm I'm gonna no, repeat I, that. I am I'm going to compare it on IMDb. Okay. Because, like I said, I haven't watched it, so Arcane's nine point one. So, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me put it this way: Arcane is on like Arcane on IBDM. I wouldn't even be surprised if it was, if it was a ten out of ten. I would not have been surprised. I mean, I mean, I'm still going to recommend it. I still have to watch uh, Castlevania, finish off Castlevania. Uh, Castlevania is kind of not worth it. I thought it was worth uh, it. It was pretty good. Season, Castle- the, la- the latest season? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I still I have to know. finish season three? Any, yeah, uh, I think it's season three or four or something like that. I need to finish season three and then I can finish season four. So wait, what yeah. was your problem with the? Okay, I, I understand the ending is a little eh. It's not just it, no. Uh, there, there's a lot of really dumb things. Like there's too many subplots going on. They're all contrivedly re- relinked back in with the main with the main point. The bullshit the with thing, wizard. The they thing, they the ruin thing, a character to try and get that plot point go. I mean, the thing I like about Castlevania and stuff like that is that they literally ended the plot in season two. They didn't need to do any more. No, they they set up for additional plot. Like the thing is, is that after we beat Alucard at the end of season two. It should have gone to like following Hector and that, that story. And then maybe Belmont dealing with like the vampire incursions from the sisters houses. 
which would have been a really cool story. But the thing is with episode series, season four we're on now. That's right, because it was season four, because in season three, Hector gets seduced by what's-her-face. Mm-hmm. Um, but the problem is with for me for season four is the Hector and the sisters get done, get their plot resolved so goddamn quick. Mm. Like, that was like another season, two seasons work there. I mean, Josh, what's your opinion on Castlevania? Have you watched nope. it? Nope. Do you watch television? <laughs> nope. Are you going to watch Arcane? I don't know. You should. Do it. <laughs> bitch, do it. Uh, Somebody be tell Josh. Bitch. <laughs> when I'm done, Arceus. Which would be... Don't be... No, <laughs> actually, no. You, you okay, can probably... Josh, I'm going to tell you to do something, okay? And this is something I tell you to do because you're a good friend of mine and I trust you. Has, anybody watching, been, has anybody been watching Demon Slayer? I, I, I mean, haven't, but I've been re- I, I don't I've care reading about Demon Slayer. <laughs> Damn. Ooh. I'm going to say why. It's mm. very simple. It's a very simple reason why. Is because Demon Slayer, to me, is a show that's very good and I literally got up to the part where everyone's like... If you want to finish this episode, you're going to love Demon Slayer. And I'm like, okay. And then I just don't do it and read Berserk instead or Code for 20 minutes. You should watch Demon Slayer. Just, I, I don't... Demon okay. Slayer. Demon Slayer. So I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. I don't think Demon Slayer is a 4.9, which is what its writing on Crunchyroll is. I don't think that. I'm going to get lambasted for this. I'm going to say that it's like... No, I can agree with that. I think it's like... I agree with that too. Four. And Did I don't you? think it's a, a masterpiece of an anime. I think it's animation is what makes it the 4.9, but it's overall like story and character development is leaves something to be desired. I think the fact that the characters are literally just cardboard cutouts of stereotypes is the problem. Yes. I've heard that. Tanjiro is a fucking idiot. I've heard that. I've heard that in the the next season or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, That problem kind of disappears. Because it, like, it gets resorted and reworked, apparently. I can see the characters um, are starting to get some development. Yes. Yeah. Um, like th- this is the thing. Like, like I can I can agree with you. It definitely is worth. It is definitely is at a four point nine. Um, that's like me with Hero Academia. Like as much as I love Hero Academia, its first season is holy Jesus Christ <laughs> gets the points. Yes. I the, the longer season, that I'm away from season, my hero, the the more I'm I'm finally getting away from like the the the, the abusive relationship feeling, you know what I mean? Cuz it was no, great it, it had its highs, but now it's just like man, you're not a 9 out of 9. Or no, you're not a 9 out of 10 anymore. You're like an 8. <laughs> no, it's it's it, it's it isn't it, is, it never should have been considered a 9 out of, uh, 9 out of 10. It should have been considered like at the first season is like a 7 out of 10 and then it moves up to uh, an 8 out of 10. Mm-hmm. And because, like, you like the good example, like in season two, you see the development. Uh, not season two, season two or three. three. I can't remember. I can't remember where you get the United St- uh, United States of Smash. That entire arc three? leading up to that. Four? I think that's three. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty. That's, yeah, that's pretty late. Yeah, that's pretty. Well, that's not late in the in the manga because yeah. now they're dealing with like really good stuff, and the manga is really good. I cannot like, wait like, for the uh, the next part because everybody's been hyping it so much. Oh, Josh, it's so don't good. you have like multiple monitors? I do. Um, yeah, so you should watch. Start watching a bunch of stuff on no, uh, multiple he, monitors. No, 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 no. Arcane is something you have to dedicate full screen. Time exactly. To. I thought I was going to watch it on the side too, but no, it deserves you to actually focus, leaving focus watching it. Like, oh my god! Like, I actually rewatched it, um, Arcane, last week. Not not last week, two weeks ago, because I because I was getting ready for a I, um, a couple I, guys I respect online to like go back and review it, and there's some really cool scenes that I saw it like I saw it a second time through, and I'm watching them discuss the first three episodes over the course of ten hours because that's what they did. <laughs> See, the problem I have is like Riot. It's it's made by Riot and Riot's ethic. No. like the problem. Well, no, let me finish. Like the universe is made by Riot Games. Yeah. Right? So, like, the reason why, like, I've been, like, not watching it is because it's like, hmm, I don't want to watch something that, like, is owned by Tencent, which is, like, the main reason why, like, like, I don't support Epic Games. I don't buy stuff from the store. Like, it's purely political, and I'm not watching the Olympics. It's, like, because All right, it's, yeah, like... No, okay, fine, fine, but that's fair. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah. And so I'm, it's, like... I'm, it, I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this out to you right now. Um, This game, this, the universe and stuff like that... The staff, the group that made this are mm. Riot adjacent. I don't think they're owned by Tencent. I think they're actually like a small separate studio now that yeah. are tied to uh, Riot through um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bryce will sign off on this as being canon lawyer, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 here's the thing. It's like, it's like, I'm willing to give that thing a chance, but like, it's like, I just try not to consume of it because it's like, I, I want to try to be ethical, even though it's fucking hard, impossible. It's literally impossible um, to stay in age though. Now at this point, Jeff, like we're at, we're at a point where nothing you do can be der- derived completely yeah, ethical. No. You, you can't be, you can't be purely, eth- you have to make, you have to pick and choose. Like yeah. I still I still buy shit from GW. I know I know I shouldn't, but I still do. But I, yeah. I try to like I try to not to give them too much money. I'll go through like Did we talk about yeah, no, local, that's a local first stuff. statement. But um yeah, but, um, so I'm gonna watch it and then I'll 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 compare it and then I'll yeah. probably come back next week and say something. I'm along gonna really the lines t- quickly of... talk on this uh, Battletech clip that you want the thing, because I gotta I gotta dip here in like five minutes. Um well, as much as I love uh... battle as much as I love Battletech, Battletech should not be a movie or a TV series. Go fuck yourself. Um, can I can I can I say something about that? Tech Go ahead. Thing? Yeah, the thing uh, will leave in the chat. I'll get the video up. Um, no, you're 100 percent right. But uh, I think it would be cool if they did more lore with Baltech. I think it would be cool if they did something with Baltech. They are. Yeah. They're putting books. out books. Book. Do more books. They are. They to. just put out a new one. It's called oh, Tamar did? Rising. It's about the, the collapse. It's about the balkanization of the Lyran Commonwealth in the northern sphem- ha- section of the inner sphere. Yeah, but how many it's nerds literally more lore. do you do you know that actually read stuff like about this? Stuff? Like I actually like play the game. Like I actually read yes. books though. Yes, I can. I, I, just I have, a, I have several discords that have people who are really obsessed about the lore and playing the game. Yeah, but when you I when you think of like book. like if you think of a, a subset of group like saying like there's a million people playing a game. I'm just using a million as a general, whatever. And only like All right. 10% of them read the book. But if you make right. a movie, 30% of them will watch mm. it. Mm. Because that's right. kind of so like the, that's kind of like the, the, the this, difference that, between the two. Uh, there is actually a big difference between the two um, because the book also comes with rules. So most people who play the game are going to pick it up and read it anyways. I don't think so. I think you're overestimating yes. how people buy books. How many people buy books? I think you're. I think yes. you're, you're. You're just in the circle of the people that buy books, and you're like, oh, most people buy the books, and I'm like, no, I know I people, don't most people don't so. buy books because like I know most people, but I also I also know that like as much as Battletech fans want a good like Battletech movie and stuff like that, we got burned by a really shitty cartoon mo- movie, and we know that it's not a good idea. But are you talking about the cartoon series? About- yes, there's a cartoon series. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The cartoon series that's literally propaganda in universe. Yes, that got canonized and was told to be like it's inner sphere, it's inner sphere propaganda. Yes, that cartoon series because it's so bad that the fans are like it's terrible. We we only reference it in memes. It's that bad. That's like yeah. Space Marine. Space Marine was uh, the original Space Marine uh, 40k movie from like 2012. Oh, that one. Yeah. That's another good example of like only people who are going to watch it are fans, and even then, that movie was not a very popular movie, even among the fans. I and, watched that movie and it turned me off of 40k. Yeah, because it's ba- because it's bad, and that's the reason why. Like we're like, no, BattleTech doesn't need a movie. Just no. So what I'm but well, no, is, no, 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 no. No, go can ahead. I, go can, ahead can, can I say? Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, Jack. Jack. stop. Yeah, I was just oh gonna say. You could do you could do a Battletech movie, but it would have to be developed by uh, Del Toro. No, fuck who no. Who did Pacific no. Rim? Fuck no. No, no. no. let me finish. Absolutely let me finish. not. No, and it would have to cover. Bad, yeah. It would have to cover. It would have like, to cover the Exodus. No, the Exodus has nothing happen in it. The Exodus is a terrible topic to cover for fucking Battletech. You know how you do a really good Battletech? You or, do the uh, uh, the, you do re, you re, reunification war and you do the fall of uh, the fall of Star League. Those two events. Yes. That's it. But you, here's the thing: for you to do the reunification war, you'd need like four or five movies. Yes. And then for the fall the fall of Star League would be like a ten movie series. So you can't do it because they try to condense them all into one movie. Like the fall of Star League is a fifteen year situation that just drags out. In the, the unifi- reunification war is a ten year conquest. All they need to do is just pull Star Wars, just pull one notable fucking battle out of it, kind of give a recap, and then have the battle well, as yeah. one of the movies. And then if it works great, oh, yeah. you got a fucking MCU on your hand. But anyway, yeah. But the pro- but the problem is, is that like the that doesn't cover a lot. Of, doesn't really like 
really build the world very well because unfortunately the battles the way that they're done like you'd have to do like well where did the battle text come from why battle text come from what did this what did this and you'd have to do, like all this really good lore dump and you'd have to do it really well in the first movie and then carry forward from there which is why like Hold a on, good no. example iron man works really well because you do like it's very simple it's iron man builds his suit he explains what the arc reactor is he perfects his suit or well perfects quotations refines his suit carries forward and then he ends and he has his big fight with his uh traitor boss it's like it's not a lot of world building but it's set, establishing the world for these characters battletech is a very established universe and oh my god that's a lot of work to do and i that's the reason why i don't think it would work okay it, it's actually that's the same problem it's the same problem with 40k right. it's the reason why a lot of 40k it's the reason why 40k movies and 40k uh store movies and shows don't work is because they have a lot of lore you have to like introduce people to and you have to do it in like very broad sweeping moments and then you have to expand upon it in the show in a meaningful manner it's the reason why like um um astarte um the, the tv the series on youtube was so good because it didn't have to do too much to introduce to the idea that, like these men are super badass but they didn't develop out like what what, what are our is what is what's going on here they didn't explain anything it's just like it's a really cool action sequence after action sequence after action sequence and then you thread out what the story was from there which is a good way to do it but you probably wouldn't be able to make a full-length movie out of that as much as i love a days i know you couldn't make a, like an hour and fifth uh, an hour and 45 minute long movie out of it Whereas Battletech, as a movie, you wouldn't be able to do it either. It's the reason why I think Battletech makes works better as video games, tabletop, and books. Battletech has, I think, 80 novels to its name. Yeah, it has a lot of novels. Anyways, same, it's uh, same, with, same with Warhammer. Like, uh, the, the best medium for tabletop <laughs> games is books and video games. So you, well, you're you yeah. right about that. But, like, you have to think about, like, how many people actually, like, read books like and, and especially in a video game fandom. i know i know i i, I and that, that is that is a problem with books books is books are kind of falling out of favor yeah so like but i, mean, look at, like, I started Warcraft. listening to audible half of their so. half of their lore for the last like two expansions was in books and i bet you 90 percent of the fucking player base literally don't know that world warcraft even published books Yep. I mean, I started listening to Audible because I'm like, oh, I want to get into this stuff. So I, I have a, yeah. I and have a meme right that's... now. Uh, I'm listening to a meme uh, besides Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan's actually pretty good. Um, uh, uh, I'm listening to uh, Atlas Shrugged by uh, Ayn Rand. Rand. Yeah. You're not listening, listening to a to... meme. You're listening to a, an objectivist try and present their <laughs> political theory through fiction. That's what they're trying to do. Um, I mean, but, is that uh, a bad that... thing? The, but the thing is, is I actually agree like um, with, with what you're saying there, Ben, is that books are really like a really bad way for certain things. It's the reason why books for video games don't translate well. Books yeah. for video games are usually like things to expand lore and like add additional information for. So um, anyways, I'm, I'm, uh, I know I'm, I'm like me and me and Ben so, are going at it. It's, it's fun. I'm actually having enjoyment out of this. So and anyways, I, and I get what let's Ben's switch from. gears to talking about MechWarrior. Yeah, sorry. Mech MechWarrior is another um, good medium. Video right. games are another good medium to expand uh lore on tabletop universes and mech warrior uh literally the only reason why i picked this game up was because my buddy keith played it who took a recommendation from alan i which didn't literally recommend was, it to him no 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 this is the part where where it became a recommendation you said don't play this game it gets grindy at the end and then literally keith goes okay and then literally alan boots up mech warrior for two straight weeks so literally keith's sister no. goes that's I what played, he said. No, I was playing Battletech. Because Keith talked to me after I finished Mech Warrior. Yeah. Well, he I said know that, that because booted up. Because <laughs> it was it was the night it was the, like the day after we did the podcast recording with me talking about finishing Mech Warrior Five. Yeah. I remember and, that. Uh, so Keith can't Keith can't throw that at me. I know that for a fact. So so Keith was like, Jeff, you're playing Mech Warrior, and so now I'm playing Mech Warrior. Yeah. And uh that uh, game is okay. It is so okay. It is okay. Yeah, uh, we we did a discussion about it earlier. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm I gonna dip. I gotta dip. So I got because I gotta go back to doing studying and stuff like that. Did we talk about uh, Sony buying Bungie? No. no, but you guys can talk with it out me because I don't okay. have an opinion anymore. <laughs> okay, and I'm assuming we talked about Raid Shadow Legends. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sort of. Uh, you guys. You guys the going, first 15 minutes. Yeah. Did Bye you call boys. Josh a fucking loser? No. no. Because oh. simply, I, Josh, I, did it, I only did it because the, in the Wardio server, uh, Mr. Wardio himself was got a sponsored 
thing from Raid Shadow Legends, and everyone else was just jumping in on it because he got a sponsor. And it's like, oh, wait, actually, yeah, actually, like, <laughs> wait, so we got, so now he's sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Yep. So and he has sponsor code and everything. That fucking loser. He has a code and everything. That fucking loser. <laughs> Get paid. Yeah. Uh, how much is he getting paid? Probably. Like, I have no idea. They're usually <laughs> pretty generous. I've heard that they they could be like thousands for the spot. Yeah. Well, he has like fourteen people actively watched him. I was in his chat last night and I was just watching it. I was like, I was just like, yeah, it was no content. But yeah. um, yeah. I play Ark Knights, so I can't judge Josh for his choice. I mean, I can, and as the only person who can and so thinks mobile gaming is trash, uh, Josh, what the fuck is wrong with you? And Ben, what the fuck is wrong with you? I like uh, Animal Girl. If it's Girl well designed, face. it's fine. And tower defenses. Yeah. I'm just going to say that Josh and Ben, I don't even know you guys anymore. Get out. Leave. Leave. Don't ever come okay. back. Even though we're developing a mobile game. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> even though we're developing a mobile game. Partially. Partially. But, uh, I don't know. I've been playing, I've been, I've been playing Destiny, which is funny. about Bungie getting bought up by Sony. It's kind of funny. Um, It makes me worried that if EA is going to get purchased out by uh, Sony. I mean, I, I, mm, that is not the correct decision. I, there would be a lot of money. They would. Yeah, be. that would be a lot of money. But the thing is, is like um, the biggest thing that like Sony just can't compete with Xbox is, is that Microsoft can afford to lose money on their Game Pass. Like that's the whole like I there was a whole like thing I heard from somebody talking about this. The The thing is, is like Microsoft oh, Game Pass is can great. lose money on, on Game Pass just to push out everybody else because like there's such a huge and amazing value that sony and nintendo can't spend that kind of money on so it's just like what it comes down to is is like the there's an amazon game pass too which is like fine but the thing is is they're not really like they're not they don't own the games the only thing amazon game pass does is is it gives you like bonuses it doesn't actually give you access to the game so, so anyways. Sony can't do that. And I think that's what that's like. The thing is, is that Microsoft is inevitably going to win the gaming war just because Sony can't do that. Nintendo will always exist because their IPs are far too strong. But now that Sony yeah. is like Sony may have some of the stronger Sony... singular IPs, but they do not have the capital yes. to promote those IPs the way Microsoft does. Well, well, do you want to know the reason why Microsoft purchased um, a bunch of studios and stuff like that is because Microsoft needs exclusives and they need IPs that they can look at. Mm-hmm. So right now, Microsoft has on their own, they have Gears of War, Halo and Psychonauts and Hellblade. I think <laughs> those three, those four titles. Well, now they have the entire um, Activision Blizzard law, uh, library to, to And now use. they have the entire, which is what? World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, Diablo, Tony Hawk, uh, Overwatch, Diablo, Starcraft, Overwatch. And also. So it's not a whole lot. No, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing is when they, since they got Activision, uh, or uh, Activision Blizzard, since they got Activision Blizzard, they also picked up King. So they got all of their mobile market, plus Diablo Immortals is coming out soon. So not only did they just they, – they grabbed their toes into, like, the MMO market and, like, the RTS and, and the other stuff too. They also grabbed King, which is, like, huge. They're, like, number three most profitable mobile company. So, yeah. like – and, and now they're like, oh, now we can step into the mobile market with ease because we have such a powerhouse of a developer for that. Mm-hmm. So it's like Microsoft, honestly, buying Activision is a fucking good fucking play. Like, I hate it because capitalism, but at the same time, like, bravo to you. I mean, I like it. Capitalism is good. Capitalism is not good. Capitalism is good when it's like okay. Unfettered capitalism is bad. Capitalism in general is good. Yes, that is a correct statement. 
that's that's all we have to say. Um, but Bungie being bought by Sony, this uh, this was a meme. And, I don't know uh, why they did it. I, I can, the thing is, they wanted them to make a new game, and it's like Bungie can barely yeah. manage Destiny too. Like, how the fuck are they going to make another game on top of managing Destiny? Well, 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 well. Here's my thing, and this is just me saying this. Okay, the last time Bungie made an IP was Destiny, and that is like fucking. And it took them two years to make it good. Yes, it took them two years to make it good. The game before that was Halo, and that was probably what one of the best franchises mm-hmm. ever. Yeah, they're they're one. Hit, so they're, they're not a one hit wonder. They they are a two hit wonder because Destiny One was also like so fucking perb. But yeah, and like and like <sighs> and like before that, it was what Marathon, Mythic. Those games are pretty cool acclaimed. Yeah, if, if they have um, a chance to take their time and like actually create a decent IP, they can create a decent new IP. But the thing is, is they want a new game like next year. Like that's mm. that's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Um, but they're probably going to like it's probably going to be something where Sony's reasonable and stuff like that. I wouldn't be surprised if they were doing work on a new IP and this just kind of happened, mm. similar to how Microsoft kind of happened. Um, but yeah, I played Dyson Sphere for five minutes. It's a it's okay. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on it. Uh, Josh, did you play anything else? Uh, I played uh, another oh. game. Did you did you we talk about all your games this week? Uh, sort of. There's a, a middle one that we kind of gl- glossed over. Uh, it was. What's Vampire Survivor? It's a oddly fun, bare bones cell phone game, kind of. Uh, what is with you becoming a, uh, a mobile game? Uh, it's just the shit that's got passed in my direction, basically. And also, this game was on the front page of, like, Steam for, like, a good hot minute. Like, it was there for, like, a, for, like, being the most sold thing ever. And it's like, what? Why? And you kind of check it out and go, oh, I see. It's just a really good, like, uh, kind of... Uh, shmuppy kind of bullet helly like you're a fantasy dude running around on screen just a survival game of dodge the bullshit that's coming at you so a lot of zombies a lot of bats a lot of weird patterns of shit coming at you and you uh buy different characters they're all kind of castlevania-esque looking and uh they all have their own different abilities and they all act a little differently uh and uh, basically, it's just a game of like survive the longest and keep going. And oh. yeah, it's just what it's just one of those of like, oh, I survived for like 10 minutes this time. That's great. And it's better than my freaking uh, 930 minutes last time. And was one of the uh, indie games that you played before, was that Deep Rock Galactic? Uh, that's all. I guess like you still consider that indie. Hello. <laughs> That one is very, uh, like... It's picking up steam. Yeah. And I've been seeing it everywhere, and I'm like, I swear that Josh mentioned this, like, Dozens six of months ago. Yeah. And, like, you were, like, all hyped about it, but nobody was playing it. And now, all of a sudden, it's fucking everywhere. I keep seeing, like, TikToks. I see it on Steam. I see it on YouTube and people talking about it. I've seen memes on Reddit about it, and I'm just like... Where did this? Why this like community suddenly explode? Like what happened? Like I think the game I, looks cool. Yeah, uh, I think it's just a lot of word of mouth that that made that explosion happen, really. And uh, yeah, like the game, like the gameplay loop of that is also still pretty fun because you're still going into dungeons, sorta. You're going into caves. You're trying to as get all the resources off of the caves, the walls of the cave, and you have four different classes that you play as, and they all have their perks. And they all play differently and you just play your class well and you try to get out with as much resources as possible uh, with that, without dying because that can happen like a lot. <laughs> Which, yeah, it seems that makes sense. really good. So like I kind of want to oh, yeah. try it. But it's like Vampire it's, Survivor? No, no, we're talking about no. T-Rock Galactic. It, it's, yeah. it's 30 bucks though. So I'm like, eh. oh, and, oh, I think I own it. You, yeah, you do probably n- should. You don't. I do own you it. You do? It doesn't say you own it. Yeah. I own Deep Rock Galactic, yeah. Do you? Uh, it doesn't say you do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who got it for me. Mm. Someone did. 
I love how this, this game relevant to you. Similar games you've played, Destiny 2 and Warframe. Warframe, 724 hours. <laughs> I'm I'm guilty of just leaving games on when uh, I'm like... Uh, no, I've uh, actually played 700 hours of Warframe actively. Oh. <laughs> Appar- apparently, apparently, I own Vampire Survivor already. That's yeah, weird. I've played hmm. I've played uh, far too much of Warframe, and actually, I can't play it anymore. Um, I've tried. I keep getting back on. Like I, I well, I, st- I have it recently, but like I think like the summer I started playing again, and I started doing all the stuff. And then just like there's just something about the gameplay loop of Warframe now that I just don't like anymore. Like I think I've just played it to death. Like there's just there there's, there's a point where like when you've put 700 hours into a game, that doing the same loop just isn't fun anymore. That dopamine and, doesn't hit the same way. And it's not even that. It's just like even though like I I can build up a new, a new frame that plays completely different and do all the stuff. I'm still like there's still one mission that's best for XP. There's still only you know one type of end game and like. If I grind out like the planets or whatever, it's still just like the same thing. It's like fly around a planet, pick up resources, build a new weapon, and blah blah blah. It's just the same thing. There's nothing actually new. It's just a new l- overlay on it, and that's why it's not fun anymore. It's like why I can't play like some arena shooters anymore because it's literally the same thing. Like I cannot play Counter Strike ever again because I put like two thousand hours into Counter Strike. It's just like it doesn't matter because like. I could spend, you know, another, like, f- you know, five hours learning a map. And then it's just like, well, I know the map now. And it's like, but I've already done this for 2,000 hours. So it's no different than any other map. It's just like, oh, there's a guy over there instead of over there. Like, there's stairs here instead of there, you know? It's just like. So you want Counter-Strike to have jetpacks randomly? Actually, no. I do <laughs> not want that. Uh, I just, I think I, there's just some games that, like, after you've played it for 2,000 hours or, or 700 hours, that they're played out. And no matter what the update comes, it's not for a veteran player anymore that, like me. Like, I guess I just need new things. Like, yeah. I've put like 100 hours into Monster Hunter. It's the same thing again that I've put 100 hours into every other Monster, How- Monster Hunter. But uh, I don't know. I guess it's just different. Some games, some games hit different than others, and I guess Warframe has just hit a point where it's just the same thing with a new coat of paint, and I don't like the new coat of paint anymore. Ah, for and that's uh, why I can't. That's why I can't play Warframe anymore. But like Destiny, Destiny does the same thing, kind of, but it's different. Yeah, I think it's the constant rebalancing of the classes, because like you may get something new in Warframe, but without anywhere new to take the new Warframe. It doesn't matter, you know. Like mm-hmm. if if there was multiple areas to grind for XP for your Warframes, that was as efficient as as efficient as the one place there is. That would be I would be able to play it more because I'd be able to be like I don't feel like it was seeing oh, this God. anymore. I can go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I can do it a different way. I don't have to just sit in a survival mission. I can go and be like I'm gonna do like actual quests for my dailies and get decent XP. You know what I mean? Right. For, uh, but since, I, I think my game, but, I the game I play for a lot of hours and I, I could probably still go back to and play. It's just that I think I hit a point of like, if I get certain items and I don't get it, then I'll just be like, well, fuck restart, go back beginning. It's John- like finding of Isaac basically. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Josh should do a uh, RimWorld. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I think I have that on my account. I don't know. RimWorld is crossed sixteen hundred hours for me. RimWorld, I have definitely done a lot of um, hours on. Yeah, like uh, Payday. I feel like I couldn't go back to Payday Two anymore. Like I love Payday. I have three hundred and forty hours in it, but it doesn't matter if they add new guns and shit because I'm still doing the same heist that I did before. There's nothing different. And that's why, like, it's a problem. And it, that's, mm-hmm. like, even, like, coming back to, like, Fallout and Skyrim. Like, I have 232 hours of Fallout. And, like, Skyrim, I think I have another, like, 400 hours in. I've seen just about everything in Skyrim. Like, besides, like, some of the, like, the really, like, obscure shit. And it's, like, no matter how much I mod it and how much m- new stuff I put on top of it, no matter what, in the base, it's still fucking Skyrim. And Skyrim is... F- I don't understand how people can put, like, a thousand hours in Skyrim. Skyrim is fucking boring. Yeah, 
Yeah. The yeah. combat sucks. The quests suck. All the areas are literally shallow and boring. There's it's 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 literally the definition of like the a mile wide puddle. There's just no depth to the game. And even Fallout has the same problem now because like before, like I feel like I play New Vegas and I go in an area and an area has a story. But I go in Fallout 4 and I go in an area and it's literally just a fucking loot cave. And that's why I can't that's why I can't play those games anymore. Like I can put 200 hours in them, but it's the same fucking problem. I hate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I think the, the most hours I put into is like Halo Infinite and like but let's actually look. Yeah, because like but at least Halo Infinite has multiplayer and like it's an arena thing. Like Yeah, that's the thing, is like is like that's the way that I put so much time and out money into like Halo Infinite is like I just end up playing it and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to play this. Uh, whatever. Who cares? And then I like look at my hour count. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. I put 121 hours in, into Halo Infinite already. Yeah, it's the it's just uh, I got to be I, I'm scrolling through my games and I see Jedi Fallen Order and I'm like, I still have to beat this. I only have 10 hours in it. Yeah, I got to play through Jedi Fallen Order. <sighs> Me and Josh are going to stream in like two weeks. So, Woo. yeah, I got to play that. I, I've been meaning Anyways, to. It's uh, fun, but like I think Dark Souls, Dark Souls, these types of games, if they don't captivate me really well, I don't want to play them. Like for some reason, three really didn't suck me in, and I think that was because when I got three, I had a weaker computer and I had a lot of problems with it. I think I spent like four or five hours one day just trying to get it to work, and I couldn't get more than like thirty frames, and mm-hmm. and I was just standing still. As soon as I started walking, I went down to twelve. Yeah, I think though that we're close to the end. Yes, I'm so. sorry. Did we talk about the honking? No, no the the great honking of Quebec. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end the show with Ben's uh, opinion on the honking. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to the Black Man Games podcast episode 334. Uh, sorry I wasn't on the show. Sorry for how long it is. Um, ben, what's your opinion on the honking? Uh. I think the biggest problem that is that uh, they're they're disrupting life of people for yeah. their protest. And while I believe that the right to protest things is important, when like blocking roads, blocking you know necessary movement of people for the day, or greatly inconveniencing the public, is not a protest worth backing. And the well i understand that like making sewing uncom- like uncomfortability is a great way to get people to see you it's not a great way to get people on your side and uh mm-hmm. that's fair i don't know anyways anyways have a good night guys <laughs> oh we're done? all right cool yeah <laughs> Thank you.